Well, this hobby of ours just never gets old. Well, welcome to Finding America. It's really great to see you here. You know, there's something I've been thinking about lately, and it's no matter how many years I've been metal detecting, each time I go out, I see something that I've never seen before, and I learn something that I've never learned before. And every single time I go out, I find something that I've never found before. This hobby just never gets old. And on top of all that, we get to go out in the great outdoors and share our adventures with our friends. In my mind, there's just absolutely no question about it. Best hobby ever. Now I got a few new permissions to hunt this week and the first one you're gonna see is a house that was built back in the 1930s and today it's a funeral home. Well, I went ahead and walked right in and asked permission if I could metal detect and they were kind enough to grant me permission. Now, it was a very small yard, but I found some really interesting things. Well, I am in the front yard of this uh, new permission. It's also by a busy, or I'm sorry, a very busy main road in town. But I got a 24-25, dug down about six inches under a root, and I got my first good target. I dug about 10 holes, and this is my first good one as an old piece, but uh, it's a nice early weedy. This one's gonna be a 1912, so that is a great sign, and uh, I'm gonna keep on going here. Well, we've got another nice high tone. This one was about 24, 25. About six, I'd say six inches down, got another wheat penny. I cleaned it off just to save some time, but this one's gonna be a nice green 1940. So that's very cool. And I'm just uh, about two feet from where I got the 1912 penny. So good signs, good signs. Well, I've got another interesting hole. I'm still working this one corner of the yard, just uh, gridding it out row by row. Got a 16. Uh, said it was in my plug and it was and it looks like I have a little jewelry pin Definitely has some age to it Looks like two hearts joined together Very cool. You can see where the pin was. Let me give it a little quick wipe. See if I can get a little more detail. Oh Yeah, that's really cool So I'll get that cleaned up a little bit more put that in my fragile box, but that is a really nice find Well, next thing was giving me uh, about a 15, 16, well actually no, this one was giving me about a 19. I was hoping for an Indian. It was way down there as you can see, uh, about eight inches. And I finally got it out. I thought I had a musket ball, but it's, uh, it's iron. So pretty cool and definitely an old piece right there. So very happy to have that. Well, this one was giving me a 23. I found two clad dimes right next to this hole. And this one kind of surprised me. Another early weedy. This one's uh, second year, 1910. So, I'll tell you, it keeps giving up the early weedies. I'm, I'm just hoping for some silver here somewhere. But I definitely enjoy digging these. Well, this is kind of a cool hole. Uh, got a 21, dug down, got the bottle cap, but I like to clean them off and see what they are. And this one is early 1900s. It's actually a Durkee and Company salad dressing cap. And it's got the Knight's Gauntlet on it. I actually did a uh, history segment on these, on the company, oh, a long time ago on one of my videos. So pretty cool piece. And uh, I'll put up a picture of a non-dug one, but it was a very interesting company. I actually started in the 1850s. And it said that uh, Mary Todd Lincoln served the salad dressing to Abe Lincoln. It was one of their favorites. Well, this one was giving me a bang in 31, very shallow. I just cut a real shallow plug. I saw it sitting here like this, some kind of a pen, but I don't know. Oh, it looks like a sheriff's office pen. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it must've been a sheriff that lost this not too long ago, but that is a neat little piece. Knox County. 
Now I'll get that cleaned up, give you a better look at it, but uh, that's a cool little piece. I like that. Well, uh, this one was giving me a 2526, and I cleaned it off. I've got a 45 Weedy. This place is full of Weedies. Well, I checked the hole before I filled it in. Gave me another 2526 signal, and I popped out two more Weedies. One in the 40s, and the other one's a 56. So that with the 45, that was uh, three Wheaties, one hole. That's pretty cool. I'll tell you what, this hole, pretty darn cool. Uh, it's getting a 19. I dug down and I got a pocket watch cover. Seen better days. But that wasn't what was really cool in the hole. What was really cool was this. Look at that tiny toy gun. It reminds me of an old Cracker Jack uh, prize. Definitely an old piece. That's gonna be really cool once I get it cleaned up. But that is a very, very cool little find. Well, like most kids in the country, I loved Cracker Jacks and I especially loved those really cool prizes that came in the box. Now, naturally, when I got back home, I thought this would be a good time to look into the company's history a little bit, and I actually learned some things that I never knew. Well, as it turns out, Cracker Jack dates all the way back to 1873, where it was sold on the streets of Chicago by two German immigrant brothers, William and Louis Ruckheim. And actually, it didn't really start to take off until it was sold at the first Chicago World's Fair all the way back in 1893. Well, after the World's Fair, the snack definitely increased in popularity, but it still didn't take off until 1908 when a very famous song was written. And I'm sure you know the song, Take Me Out to the Ball Game. And that one line, buy me some peanuts and Cracker Jack, made it forever synonymous with America's pastime, baseball. Well, a very interesting side note concerning that song. Well, that song was written by a vaudeville actor named John Norworth. And believe it or not, he'd never been to a baseball game in his life. Now, the Cracker Jack mascot logo also has a very cool story. Now, the sailor boy you see in that logo was actually modeled after William Ruckheim's grandson, Robert, who unfortunately passed away at the age of eight from pneumonia. Now, the dog that stands by his side well, the dog was named Bingo for Cracker Jacks, but it was modeled after a stray dog named Russell that one of Ruckheim's business partners adopted. And one side note about this logo, it meant so much to Ruckheim that when he passed away, he had it engraved on his headstone. Now those toy prizes, they first appeared in Cracker Jack boxes back in 1912. And many of the small metal toys, like the one I found, were made by the Tootsie Toy Company, who also made the Monopoly board game pieces. And today, the snack is actually owned by Frito-Lay. And to get the prizes today, you have to download an app and scan a QR code. Well, times have changed, but the snack has remained the same. But if you ask me, i just as soon have one of these as a prize. Well, I got this next permission at an amazing looking house that was built all the way back in the 1820s. I was pretty excited about getting this permission, but I was forewarned that it had been hunted and hunted hard in its past. But I still wanted to give it a try, and I managed to pull some interesting things out of there. So I am hunting at this old, old brick home built in 1820. Uh, give you an idea, I'm kind of in like a little courtyard right in the middle of the L, L wing of this building. And I got a 22 dug down. And I got an old piece of brass. It's nice and green. It's got some type of a loop at the top. But I don't know what it is. I thought it was like a point to a dart. But it's actually, I think that's a loop, like on a pendant at the top of this. So kind of unsure about what this is, but it definitely has a lot of age and appears to be hollow. So I'll get it cleaned up later and give you a better look at it. Well, I was just hunting around this tree here behind the house. I was getting a really choppy signal. 
had to go way down under that root and I pulled out this hand forged spike that is pretty darn cool and it's not a railroad spike something someone made way back when but big square head on it that's very cool definitely like that well this one only gave me an eight but I think I was just catching the tip of it because I finally got it out but look at this massive spike and it's an odd thing look at that it's flat on that side very cool not quite seen one like that before but uh pretty neat piece well I'll tell you what I I was hunting with that 11 inch coil not having much luck I know this place had been pounded by someone earlier the owner said that they had hunted a lot and uh, and I have to say uh, I'd like to meet the guy he seems like a decent guy because he gave her a bunch of nice things in a nice shadow box and I really like when guys do that so uh, I tell you what I definitely would like to run into the guy and uh, it sounds like sounds like one of the good guys but anyway I decided to switch over to the small coil and I tell you I got that spike right away and now I got a 17 right next to it and I'm gonna say I'm gonna say it's an Indian because of the number I was getting I don't know I just saw it pop out and I grabbed the camera oh the, yeah there's no doubt check it out Indian head penny that is awesome trying to see what the date is I'm not sure but you can probably see it a whole lot better in the camera but that is really nice I tell you what small coil never underestimate it well uh, got a seven sometimes an eight on this signal and it's kind of uh, what you would expect to find at a house this age now this is a uh, a bucking ball they would put one musket ball in three of these and that would be your bucking ball load into a musket so nice little drop right there and uh, nice little period piece of lead well I got a, another little period find here just give you a look at this beautiful house I'm gonna move it here on the yard on the side here and got a 13 and found part of an old horseshoe a pretty cool little find well I was just going along the sidewalk right in front of this place and uh, got a 13 and it was in the plug and uh, believe it or not I got a flat button looks to be this one's probably gonna be a shirt button and I think it's plain on this side I kind of cleaned it off just a little bit but I'll check it when I get home see if there's a back mark or not but yeah, that's pretty cool Well, I met up with Chris the next day on Saturday at another spot that we have. Now, this site features the turn of the century schoolhouse, and all that remains now is an empty knoll. Now, we'd hoped to go there and find a few coins, maybe a toy or two, but as we quickly found out, this place had some surprises for us. Well, Chris called over to me and said he had something interesting. This isn't it, but uh, it's a little uh, what is cap that? gun trigger. Oh, yeah. Got some gold coming through. Maybe it goes to your gold cap gun. <laughs> yeah. But this what? was kind of neat. Oh, that is cool. It came out looking like that, and I'm like, what in the world? But I flipped it over, and there's a switch. Ah. It's an ancient metal flashlight. Oh, dang. Yeah, that's probably 30s, 40s. Yeah. Very cool. Looks Sometimes like it has a manufacturer name on the bottom, but I look. This one doesn't. It's made in USA, says, huh? Yeah, made in USA. Hey. Look at the cool colors on that coming through. <laughs> yeah, that is it's cool. toned. Very cool, man. Yeah, it's different. Yeah, I definitely like it. Well, my first good target after a couple of pieces of trash. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we're, we're kind of chuckling right now because I can't believe it. Uh, got a 13 dug down. I was looking for a nickel. I saw I saw that, and I thought uh, maybe a button if I'm lucky. But check it out. J hook. J hook. Holy cow! Civil War soldiers knapsack J hook. 
That is awesome. This is like the but second one in this area that we... Uh, yeah, I'm looking for buffalo nickels in a market this site. <laughs> yeah, we're just looking at, I mean, there's an old home site here and there's an old school site. And we're kind of in the backyard of where the old school once sat. And yeah. I pull a J-hook. That is insane. Wow. I kind of wish Chris had found it. He, he's waiting on his first complete one, and I got two out of this area. It's bizarre. I've never gotten one, but all the other cool Civil War stuff. Yeah, I know. Everyone's got their little white whales. <laughs> but that is an awesome find. Very, very cool. Well, this is kind of cool. I was just sweeping along this tree right here. And uh, not far from where Chris, he's hunting up there right now. We're trying to see how far the relics go, but got a signal right up against the base of the tree and I looked down and that's what I saw and I knew what it was right away. I haven't pulled it out yet, but I, I'm telling you, I think this is a window weight and uh, <laughs> yeah, check it out. That's where the rope would have tied. Now this is an old window weight and it would have been sort of a counterbalance to help you open up of the wooden windows, but a rope would have tied up here and then it would have gone up to a pulley system. There would have been another weight too. But they use these on windows and they would use these on uh, pocket doors. So, pretty cool little piece and probably part of the original school building. Yeah, this might have been a little playground area. Yeah. Look at the size of that thing. There is a number on there, so you probably see what it looks like an uh, undug example. Yeah. Looks but like an old Jeep, huh? I think so, or maybe a, a truck. tractor, or truck. Yeah, it's definitely part to a very old toy. How cool. Definitely like that. Has some green paint showing through. Yeah, that's really neat, man. <laughs> very cool. Well, I turned around to head back to my machine, but then Chris says there's more in the hole. So we'll just see what it got. It looks like, I don't know. I think the just would, about the whole thing is going to be down in there. There's one, two, yeah. three. Here's the hood, I guess. It looks like there's an air horn on top. So this is probably some kind of big truck, but it's been a, in a horrendous accident. <laughs> Very bad one. <laughs> that might actually be it. Yep. yep. Ah, cool. Well, I'll tell you what, sometimes you get some very unexpected finds. Uh, not very far from where I got that J-hook, about 20 yards. I got a 13 dug down, and I mean, it is just an inch or two down. But look what I got. Another Civil War relic. That is an Eagle coat button, general service. Now, it's in pretty bad shape. When I pulled it out, it came out like that. And the top was already loose from it but look at that though it's a uh, it's a shame because it's in really nice condition it's just very brittle but that is pretty darn awesome <laughs> in the backyard of an old school site so yeah we're gonna buckle down here a little bit and I don't know maybe something else will pop out but that's pretty darn cool well Chris says he has something pretty cool here. Oh, yeah. I do not know for sure. Uh, I would say that's Civil War era. Yeah. I no. think I think so. Uh, it's, I've just never... I haven't seen one exactly like that. It, it does. We were thinking... Yeah, first thing I thought of was... Uh, sword hanger. Yeah, sword hanger. But it's very thin. And... I've just not seen one. It, it could be some other type of equipment hook. Yeah. I don't know. I have to do some research on that, but that looks period. And I'm telling you, the last this is if this is Civil War, it's our third target Civil War in an inch down. Yeah, <laughs> and we're we're kind of getting a little excited because it's starting to feel like a camp. Yeah. And we do know the home site that we're hunting over on this property too goes back at least early 1900s. But then I'm starting to think. Chris and I were both thinking at the same time. <laughs> It might actually go back to that period. And yeah. Officers stayed in the house and uh, enlisted men were here on the knoll. Oh, man. So, I don't know. We weren't expecting this. We were hoping to get some buffaloes or something from the schoolyard. Yeah, old merch or something. <laughs> well... I've always been the first to say that Chris is pretty bright, but uh, 
<laughs> he's really he's what really bright he? today. He's he's twice as bright today. Look how freaking awesome that is. Oh, though. that is so cool. It's still got the dome for the flashlight in there. He got another vintage flashlight. This one is oh, ever ready. Yeah. That's sweet. Yeah, I have somebody, never seen uh, one with a lens. I have never gotten a lens. That, I mean, that is that's cool. Solid. That is wicked, man. How cool. Well, at least for today, you're you're much brighter than I've, I've ever known you. Okay. <laughs> Now, unfortunately, we ran out of time at that place, but it may just be a campsite. We're not sure just yet, but I am definitely going to go back there and see what else I can find. And uh, I really hope you enjoyed watching this one. I couldn't believe that Chris actually got another flashlight that day. <laughs> but we had so much fun, and like I said, this hobby never gets old. It's definitely the best hobby ever. Now, don't go anywhere just yet because I have some very cool historical photos coming up in just a few seconds. And I really think you're going to enjoy these. And remember, it's history that makes a find a treasure, and I cannot wait to see you back here next week on Finding America.